Hey, everybody. Um, so today I'm going to go through that example that um, I kind of finished class with, um, in which we're given a PDF. Actually, it's an exponential probability density function. And then we're asked to calculate a number of features from that uh, function. I'm also going to um, define uh, skewness and kurtosis, which are uh, sort of measurements or, or um, uh, numbers which give us some sense of what the probability density function looks like. So basically all of the calculations and, and um, um, definitions that we're going to be talking about today are in one way or another related to characterizing um, a uh, probability density function for a random variable. So with that, let's go ahead and get the uh, screen share going and uh, we can start the lecture. Okay, so um, I left you with example 3.5 uh, at the end of lecture, and uh, the problem was uh, the problem statement looked like this: the useful life, use life, the useful life t capital T of welding machines is a random variable with an exponential probability density function or PDF. Um, I should say right off the bat that um, I <laughs> had another typo in the lecture notes. Um, I originally put this as 1 over lambda. It actually should be lambda. Um, you can tell that just by looking at the units. So um, the argument of the exponential here has to be unitless. Because t has units of time, that implies that lambda has units of inverse time. And if we think about probability density functions, um, if the random variable is going to have um, units of time or it's going to take on um, values that have units of time, then the probability density function, this f function here, has to have units of inverse time. And so if we compare the left-hand side with the right-hand side, the only way that works is if lambda also has units of inverse time. So it has to, uh, the bottom line is that lambda has to be multiplied, not divided. Anyway, that, that was my mistake. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, the, the other key thing to note is that this is a probability density function. It's an analytical model for the uh, PDF. Um, and a lot of these analytical models basically have a parameter or maybe two parameters or maybe even more parameters. Um, and in this case, the uh, distribution parameter is that lambda. And so we want to calculate a whole series of features of this PDF, which are going to be then given in terms of that lambda parameter. So once we fix the lambda parameter, we'll be able to determine um, the expected value of the PDF, the, you know, and so forth and so on. Some of these, actually, you don't need to fix the value. You can just um, write down without knowing the value of lambda. Okay, so let's uh, get started. So we're going to start looking at the cumulative distribution function for that uh, exponential PDF. Um, we start with the definition of the uh, cumulative distribution function as the integral from what would be in general minus infinity to some time t of the probability density function. Now, um, in this case, we're talking about the random variable being time. And so, and in fact, if we go back to the problem statement, um, this is the useful life uh, is what we're really talking about as the random variable. Um, so that's not going to be negative, right? It's got to be positive. So the smallest value that useful life can take on is zero. Um, and theoretically, at least mathematically speaking, the useful life could be infinity. And so if we come back to the limits then of the integral, instead of minus infinity to some time t, it's going to be zero because that's the lower limit's going to be zero because that's as small as my random variable uh, big T can, can get. All right, so, um, so we know the limits, and then we can just substitute in our um, exponential function for this PDF. The um, lambda pulls out because it's a constant, and so we are left with the integral of this exponential, which is easy to solve. The lambda carries over, and then this is the um, uh, integral of that exponential function, just brings the lambda down and a minus sign here. And then we have to apply the limits, zero to t. Um, when we do that, we end up with one minus e to the minus lambda t as our CDF. And so that's the answer. And um, I went ahead and calculated um, or plotted the PDF and the CDF for you um, where we choose a specific value of that parameter. In this case, lambda is equal to one per year. Remember, it has to have units of inverse time. So basically, it has units of one per year. And the PDF 
for that particular choice of lambda is shown here. So it starts out at uh, um, one when um, the random variable takes on the time of t equal to zero, and then it decays exponentially uh, with time uh, expressed here as years, up to 10 years. The CDF that we just calculated, when minus that exponential, is going to do the opposite. It's going to go up, and you can see that it eventually asymptotes to one, like a good CDF. So it, it has the proper limits, basically zero uh, at the lower limit um, of the random variable, that is uh, time t equals zero, and then it approaches one as t goes to infinity. Oh, and I should say here, what I used was Mathematica. And if you guys don't use Mathematica, you should give it a shot. Um, and you can actually just type these commands in directly into Mathematica, which I think you have a site license by virtue of being a UCI student. Plot is the, uh, the uh, command here. Um, and then I'm just asking it to plot two curves. One is that exponential, which is the PDF, and the other one is the CDF. And I use the curly cues just to indicate that I want both of these plotted for the range of t 0 to 10. OK, so the next um, thing we're supposed to calculate is the expected value, which is the mean. And here, remember, the mean is denoted by this mu symbol, um, random variable capital T. Uh, it's also, mathematically speaking, what's called the expected value of that random variable. Um, which is calculated just by taking the first moment of the, um, the PDF. So we multiply x times that PDF function. And if we substitute our exponential PDF, again, the lambda pulls out, and we're left with this x e to the minus lambda x um, in the uh, integrand. So um, this is not you know, immediately obvious what, what this uh, answer is here. I guess I should also say the limits, because this is a moment, go from the lower limit of the random variable 0 to the upper limit, which is infinity. Um, now, coming back to this integral, look, I mean, that's not obvious what that is. Um, when it was just e to the minus lambda x before, we could integrate it immediately, but x e to the minus lambda x is not immediately obvious, but we can integrate using integration by parts. And here's a little refresher on integration by parts. Remember, if you have the integral from a to b of u dv, uh, integration by parts says that that's equal to uv evaluated uh, at a and b minus the integral of v to u, again, uh, with the limits a to b. <clears throat> so really, the only trick with integration by parts is we have to identify which part of this integral is going to be the u and which part is the dv. And, and the thing that you want to look at is that you know how to solve the integral e to the minus lambda x. <clears throat> That's easy. Um, so you'd like to end up, after you apply integration by parts, with a new integral which doesn't have this x sitting here. And so you can do that by allowing x to be u, because when you finally get to the integral, then you're going to have du. And if x is u, then that's just dx. So the x goes away. And um, as a result, you're going to have uh, an exponential function here. We need to calculate exactly what that is for v. Um, but it'll be something we can actually solve. So um, so here's here it is. We're actually going to set u equal to lambda x so we can capture that. Uh, that prefactor, the constant value as well. So we're going to let u equal to lx, or lambda x, and then we need to uh, set dv equal to everything left over. So we've taken care of lambda, we've taken care of x, now we need to take care of e to the minus lambda x dx, and that, so that's our dv. And so here we go. Um, the expected value of, of the random variable x in this case is then going to be um, lambda, this is the integral that we're trying to solve, integral x e to the minus lambda x dx. Um, now we apply our integration by parts. So this is lambda, again, we're just taking that lambda over. Now this is going to be uv evaluated between 0 and infinity. Remember, we said u was going to be uh, x, or lambda x, I just pulled lambda out. Um, and v is going to be equal to the integral of this. Uh, expression. So the integral of that expression is just going to be e to the minus lambda x over minus lambda. And so that, it, my friends, is v. <clears throat> okay, so that's 
uh, uv evaluated between zero and infinity, and then minus, let's look at their integration for parts, minus the integral from zero to infinity um, of v du. Okay, so du is just dx. Uh, v, we've already figured out, it's just e to the minus lambda x over minus lambda. That comes from here. Um, and of course, the lambda carries over from um, the uh, definition of, of u being lambda x. And this is an integral we can solve, right? So we just um, evaluate it again. It's going to pull another lambda down there and another minus sign. And so we end up with a lambda squared, and the minus sign here cancels. And so we just end up with a plus right here. And so again, this is evaluated between zero and infinity. So let's look at the, um, the, the limits and let's evaluate these limits here. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, so if we look at uh, the upper limit infinity, when we plug that in, it's going to make x blow up, right? But what's interesting is it's going to make e to the minus lambda x go to zero. And so x is blowing up as x goes to infinity. e to the minus lambda x is going to zero as x goes to infinity. And in fact, um, you may remember from your calculus that uh, exponentials go to zero faster than do linear terms. And so consequently, the product of these two is going to go to zero uh, as x goes to infinity. So this upper limit is just zero. The lower limit is going to be, um, well, let's plug it in and see. So we plug zero in for x and zero in for x here. So this just becomes one over lambda. There's a minus, so minus one over lambda. Uh, times zero is just zero. So in the end, that uv term is just zero. And then we're left with this um, second term that we need to evaluate. So basically, remember, that's this here. So we plug infinity in for x, and that's going to be e to the minus infinity, which is zero. So that's going to give us a zero. And then we evaluate the lower limits. So that's going to be minus, and we plug zero in for x. That's going to be one over lambda squared. And so we have minus lambda times quantity 0 minus 1 over lambda squared. And that obviously simplifies to just 1 over lambda, so that the answer is that the mean of this exponential distribution, or its expected value, uh, is going to be equal to 1 over lambda. So if lambda was equal to, uh, say, uh, <clears throat> um, 0.1 per year, then taking 1 over lambda would be 10. So that would be 10 years. So the mean would be the mean life, useful life would be 10 years if lambda was 0.1. OK, so we calculated the mean. Let's calculate the mode. This is a bit easier. So remember, the mode is just the most likely value. So that's going to be the value which has the highest probability density. Uh, this is an exponential function. And so it starts out um, high at uh, t equal to 0 and then decays from there. So we know that the value at t equal to zero is larger than any other value on the interval of interest zero to infinity. So our mode then is going to be um, the value of the PDF uh, evaluated at t equals zero, which turns out to be uh, lambda. You can just tell by looking. So if we plug t equal to zero here, the exponential goes to one. And so we're just left with lambda. And so um, <clears throat> the, the mode then is going to be the time at which that maximum value occurs, and that's just uh, t equal to zero. And so if we were to look at our PDF again, uh, I plotted against time or useful life in years, uh, that mode's going to be right there at the top and indicated by the red arrow there. So that's our mode. Um, so the next. Um, requirement or question is to calculate the median of this um, PDF. So the median is basically the um, value uh, of the random variable for which 50% uh, of the probability is less than that value. Half of the values will, um, probability will fall below that value. So that means we can look at the CDF and we can set the, um, the time to the median when the CDF equals 0 0.5. Remember, the CDF is the probability that the random variable will be less than some value, uh, less than or equal to some value t. <clears throat> so if that probability is 50%, uh, that means that that's the um, time uh, at which 
um, half of the probability is, is less than that value. And that's by definition the median. And so we just set our CDF equal to 0 0.5. We calculated uh, previously that the CDF is one minus e to the minus lambda t median. And so now we can solve for t median. And so I'm just doing that stepwise here. First move the um, one over to the other side, solve for the exponential, and then solve for t by taking the natural log of both sides. And so you end up finally with this expression that the median time is gonna be minus natural log 0.5 over lambda. And if you evaluate natural log 0.5, it's about negative 0.693. So the median is about 0.693 divided by lambda. So that's interesting. If lambda was again 0.1, we know that the um, mean would be 10 years. And then if we plug that in here, uh, the median would be 6.9 years. So the median would be less than the mean. In fact, we can actually compare the mode, the mean, and <laughs> this should be, sorry, this should be the median, or one of these should be the median, not uh, compare the mode, mean, mean. <laughs> Comp compare the mode, mean, and median. Boy, that's a mouthful. Um, and for this example, again, let's just assume that the, um, the, the distribution parameter lambda is 0 0.1 per year. Okay, and here's our probability density function for that. Uh, choice of lambda. It's going to start out at 0 0.1 at time t equals 0 and decay exponentially, and uh, our horizontal axis is in years. And so um, our mean is just 1 over the uh, parameter lambda, and so that's going to be 10 years. So our mean is going to come in right about here. <clears throat> our median, as we just determined, was natural log minus natural log 0 0.5 uh, divided by lambda, Let's see if we can bring it back up again, minus natural log, natural log 0 0.5 divided by lambda. Um, and lambda in this case is 0 0.1. So that's going to mean that the median time is 6.93 years. So it's actually to the left of the mean. So that's the median. So half of the area under this curve is to the right of that median value. Half of the uh, probability or area of the curve is to the left of that median value. And then, of course, the mode is just the highest, most probable um, you know, time, and that's going to be uh, time t equal to zero. So you can see in this case, we've got a very asymmetrical uh, probability density function, and the mode, median, and mean are all different. Um, we might be interested in the variance or the dispersion um, of values around, um, say, the mean. And so we could calculate the variance. Remember, the variance of the random variable t is going to be equal to, um, well, it's not shown here, but it's essentially equal to the, um, the probability weighting of the random variable minus the mean squared. And when we do out, when we work out the uh, the math on that, it turns out, as I indicated in the lecture, that you can express the variance of t as equal to the expected value of t squared minus the mean squared. So we've already calculated the mean. That's one over lambda. So this term is going to be uh, one over lambda squared. So there it is, right there. Um, so we just have to calculate this expected value of t squared. Mathematically, the expected value of t squared is just the moment of the probability distribution function on um, the second moment. So that would be x squared times the probability density function. And so uh, it's really this integral that we have to worry about. We've already taken care of the, the second term in that equation. Um, so we just have to solve this. And you can imagine that basically we're going to play the same game that we did um, calcu um, yeah, calculating the mean, where we can use um, the, uh, the integration by parts to essentially knock this down to an x, and then it'll be x e to the minus lambda x, and we already solved that integral last time. So remember, integration by parts, again, is integral u dv equals uv minus integral v du. And so in this case, we're going to select for u lambda x squared, so that when it comes to integrating this uh, second term on the right-hand side, uh, we'll be able to do that right away because it's just an exponential sitting there. So we let u equal lambda x squared. dv is going to be equal to, oopsies, I should have a dx sitting there. So this should be dv equals e to the minus lambda x dx. My bad. <clears throat> and so um, then when we take this integral that we're supposed to calculate and we apply integration by parts, we have 
uh, u, which is lambda x squared, times v, which is going to be the integral of e to the minus lambda x dx, which is just e to the minus lambda x divided by minus lambda. So that's that term. That's my v right there. And then we have our two limits, 0 to infinity. Um, that's going to be minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v. Well, we already calculated v. It's this guy right here. So we just plug it right in. Um, and then du. Well, let's look at u. u is lambda x squared. So du is going to be 2 lambda uh, x dx. And so uh, that's what we have here lambda 2x dx. So that would be our du. And um, we can simplify that a bit. We um, basically apply first off the same limits. We use the same argument that we used uh, last time for this first term. We know that x is going to blow as you substitute infinity or the limit uh, as x goes to infinity is applied. But the exponential is going to um, go to 0 faster than the uh, polynomial will. And so consequently, this term is 0. In the second term, basically, we can simplify. The lambdas cancel out. We can bring the 2 uh, out. And so we're left with 2 uh, x e to the minus lambda x dx. But we've already solved this. Remember, um, we know from earlier, um, from the last uh, calculation we did with the mean, that the expected value of x, which is the mean, is just equal to 1 over lambda. Um, but we can see that, um, and, and that just means that this integral, if we um, sort of solve for the integral itself, it's going to be equal to 1 over lambda squared. But you can see this integral is exactly identical to that integral, so we can just substitute 1 over lambda squared. <clears throat> and so uh, what we end up with finally is that the expected value of t squared is 2 over lambda squared minus the mean squared, which is uh, 1 over lambda squared. And that's going to give us a 1 over lambda squared. So after all of that, we find that the variance of this exponential um, PDF is just 1 over lambda squared. Then we're asked to calculate the standard deviation. Uh, this is a lot easier. Remember, it's just the, um, the square root of the variance. The variance is in units, in this case, of um, time squared. But the uh, standard deviation by taking the square root is in units of time. And that's a lot better for like comparing it to the mean. We're trying to get a sense of how much spread there is around the mean. And so interestingly enough, the uh, standard deviation in this case just works out to um, 1 over lambda. If we go back um, to, uh, I guess we don't have to go way back, but our mean was also just um, 1 over lambda. There's the median, the mode. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, so there's the mean. So the mean was just 1 over lambda. So the mean and the standard deviation in this case are exactly the same. Sorry, I have to go forward so much. Yeah, so the, the uh, standard deviation and the mean are exactly the same. They're equal to 1 over lambda. And in fact, the ratio of those two, the ratio of the standard deviation and the mean is called the coefficient of variation, which just gives you how, an idea of how much spread you have relative to the mean. And in this case, they're both 1 over lambda, so that's equal to 1 or 100%. So you have a coefficient of variation here of 100%. There's quite a lot of spread in this distribution. All right, so um, another uh, quantity or characteristic of PDFs that you might want to know about is called skewness, which basically is a measure of how um, uh, asymmetrical the distribution is, um, either uh, sort of skewed to the left, which is called positive skewness, or skewed to the right, which is uh, referred to as negative skewness. So, um, and that can be um, calculated by taking um, essentially the expected value of t minus the mean cubed. So remember the variance would be t minus the mean squared. So this is t minus the mean cubed and then weighted by the probability density function. And so we can just um, do an example to kind of get a sense of um, what the skewness would be for the exponential distribution. Take that exponential distribution and plug it into my definition of skewness, which is this uh, expected value here. 
And so I end up with this nasty integral. Probably it could be solved um, uh, using integration by parts, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go there. So I'm lazy. So uh, one of the great things about Mathematica, I'm sure most of you know, is that you can just have Mathematica compute that for you analytically. So I've asked it to integrate. That's a command. Um, and then this is the argument of the uh, integral. So it's t minus one over lambda, which is the mean in this case of the exponential distribution, cubed. Right. So there's the cube times lambda times the exponential of minus lambda t, right? And then I'm going to integrate that t between 0 and infinity. And I just click return, and then it comes back and it says conditional expression. So basically, this is the answer, 2 over lambda cubed, provided that the um, real value of lambda is greater than 0. And, and it is, because um, lambda is related to uh, the mean um, uh, time or um, sort of uh, useful life which has got to be a positive number. So, uh, so that's our answer, 2 over lambda cubed. And so in the case of um, the, uh, <clears throat> the exponential distribution, it has a positive ex uh, skewness as expected because remember the exponential distribution starts highest at 0, that's the mode, and then it declines from there. And if you compare that to uh, some of these other PDFs that are shown, uh, it would definitely be positive skewness. And in fact, we can also define uh, what the authors of um, the book, Ang and Tang, referred to as a skewness coefficient. So you basically take that expected value of t minus mu raised to the third, and you divide it by the standard deviation raised to the third, so it's uh, unitless. And in our case, if we do that, <clears throat> uh, we've got uh, the expected value of t minus mu to the third is 2 over lambda cubed. We just calculated that. And the um, standard deviation we calculated a few slides ago was 1 over lambda. So we cube that and take the ratio, and we get that in this case, the uh, skewness coefficient for the exponential distribution is theta equal 2. So it's pretty skewed, which makes sense. It looks really skewed. It is not a symmetrical distribution. Um, there's another term or feature of distributions which um, the book talks a little bit about, which is called kurtosis which is really a measure of how peaked the distribution is. And, um, and it basically is defined in the book. There's actually different definitions out there. So if you go to uh, Wikipedia, you'll see a long discussion of kurtosis um, and some of the pitfalls and dangers of interpreting it. But anyway, uh, they, the Ang and Tang define it as the expected value of um, t minus the mean raised to the fourth. And so what does that it look like? It's basically just the weighting of t minus mu t to the fourth by the probability distribution function um, integrated over the entire domain um, of the uh, random variable. <clears throat> For the exponential distribution, of course, that lower limit is zero, not at minus infinity. In fact, let's look in what this would be for the exponential distribution. Again, we just um, plug and chug. We know that mu of t is one over lambda for the exponential distribution raise that difference to the fourth times the uh, exponential distribution for uh, the PDF f of t, which is going to be lambda times e to the minus lambda t um, integrated between t equals zero, that's the lower limit, not minus infinity, because we can't have negative useful lives to infinity. And then I hit return, and Mathematica uh, gives me back this answer. It says, provided that the real value of lambda is greater than zero, um, the answer is 9 over lambda raised to the fourth. And so in this case, for the exponential distribution, the kurtosis, as Ang and Tang have um, defined it, is 9 over lambda raised to the fourth. And I've just gone ahead and calculated or plotted a couple of examples for you. So I basically have three different curves which um, were generated with this plot command in Mathematica. So I use the curly cues again to just indicate I've got a set of curves I want Mathematica to plot, one involving lambda equal to 10, lambda equal to 1, and lambda equal to 0.1. And I'm going to let that time useful life go between 0 and 10. And so that 10 could be the units, could be years or seconds, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. And so basically these are the curves that you get. So this would be uh, the case for um, t equal to, uh, sorry, lambda equal to 10. 
so basically you see uh, that it's quite um, dropping quite rapidly. And, uh, and in that case, the kurtosis uh, works out to 0 0.009, 0 0.0009. <clears throat> and this is the case for lambda equal to one. And then finally, lambda equal to uh, 0.1. And basically, what you can see in this case is this um, kurtosis is defined is getting bigger as the curve gets flatter. So it is definitely some measure of peak in this, although depending on how you normalize it, actually, the kurtosis value could go the other way as the curves get more peaked. And you can see that in the Wikipedia article if you type in kurtosis to your browser. Um, if you're super interested, you can have a look. All right, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, I hope it was useful to you guys, and um, I will see you in class tomorrow.